Betty, thanks very much. I'm joined by the ranking Republican on the House Oversight Committee, Daryl Issa of California. Congressman, thank you for the time. No, it's going to well, be an interesting you. hearing today. Ken Lewis is on the hot seat today, but I want to focus on the questions surrounding the government officials involved uh, in the Merrill Lynch Bank of America transaction. I know I've seen this Republican memo that yeah. suggests uh, you all have reached a conclusion, at least the staff have reached a conclusion, they crossed the line. Are you convinced they crossed the line? We believe that there, there was some line crossing. Now, how it affected Ken Lewis, uh, how he perceived it is part of our due diligence because, you know, emails are very sterile. We want to try to understand the atmosphere and so on. We, as you said, he's on the hot seat, but there's two empty seats today. We're not going to be able to do the one-two comparison. We'll have to uh, ask Ken Lewis, get a real feel for how he felt, how in context this was going on, and quite frankly, uh, Ed Towns and I are going to have to bring those other two seats in and talk to them to get the full story. Do you have agreement from Chairman Towns to bring Chairman Bernanke and former Secretary we, Paulson in? We do. Actually, it's a very bipartisan belief that it would have been better had we had them all. We're accepting the one-two because we recognize that you can't always time people together. Uh, Mr. Lewis is coming in without a subpoena. We expect uh, Paulson and uh, Bernanke to come in the same way without a subpoena, and we expect they will. All right. Let me ask you about these internal emails. Again, you all, the committee, has had access to emails uh, at the Fed, also other documentation communication as a result of the transaction. You've had a chance to look at those. Do they suggest to you that the Fed chairman inappropriately pressured Ken Lewis to complete this transaction? It does appear as though the Fed chairman and uh, some of the uh, regionals, uh, Richmond and so on, did. We want to be very careful, though. We have to see if, in fact, one, Ken Lewis uh, really expect, felt that way. And two, and I think more importantly, we have to ask some serious questions about what the role of the Fed will be going forward. You know, we're the reform, government reform committee. So it's not just oversight, it's how can we change this to prevent it in the future. It's not about going after what was done we're not, you know, we're not the U.S. Attorney's Office, but we are very concerned that if this abuse uh, distorts markets and thus has a chilling effect on capital formation, that we send a message to the market that it won't happen again. And probably that's more the reason that we're doing this after, in fact, the merger's done. Uh, I know you still want to hear from the chairman himself. You want to hear from Ken Lewis, but you have not reached a conclusion at this point that the Fed chairman did anything that requires him to step down from his position. No, we have not. And one of the other important things is only uh, two days ago, uh, uh, Chairman Towns, on, on a very consultative basis, we issued subpoenas for the first time because although we got some information, we did not get all the information we want in this investigation. What about those people who suggest uh, you're looking back in time? Even Mr. Lewis today will tell you the Maryland Lynch acquisition has been a good thing for us. This is a waste of the committee's time to look at a transaction that happened in the past, also at a time of crisis. Uh, government uh, officials had a, uh, had a responsibility for the overall financial system. These actions were taken in that crisis mode, and it, it's, it doesn't make any sense to try and question them now. Well, we gave the uh, president and his administration, the last president and his administration, very unique powers to spend money. We did not give them powers to distort uh, decisions made by fiduciaries of their corporations. And that's a, it's a critical difference. We did not say we waive bankruptcy laws. We did not waive any of the officers and directors' responsibilities. And so although the money that the administration brought to bear could be either given or not given based on the government's belief that the right thing was happening, beyond that, anything more than that would likely be an abuse of power. And that's, I think, a lot of what we're looking at. Additionally, as you can imagine, September 11th began a crisis in America. The war on terrorism is still going on. Uh, the auto industry, although a lot of things have been done, likely will be in crisis for quite a while. You can always define a crisis to justify government intervention. We have to let the market know that that intervention will be predictable and limited. Let me just ask you, finally, you come from a business background yourself before you came here to the Hill. Do you think Ken Lewis was obligated to share this information with shareholders? Is that going to be a question for you uh, today on the Hill? Uh, no, it, it won't be. And, and, and the reason it won't be, having done a number of acquisitions myself, is if you try to do a weekend acquisition, which was effectively this very narrow window he had, the officers, the directors even have to tend to give the CEO that last minute uh, decision. And I think Ken Lewis was in a position where any kind of going further to the stockholders on the day by day was probably inappropriate. Having said that, we walk a fine line. We cannot make Ken Lewis answer questions about whether he breached his fiduciary responsibility under this pressure. All right, Congressman Issa, I know it's going to be a busy day for you. Appreciate your time this Thank morning. You. Ahead of this hearing, we'll be back.